Hello. Welcome to It's Your Life. I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley. And wow, you know, I hope everybody had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Uh, we in Texas and it's hot. I mean, really, really hot here. I think, uh, Michelle, if I'm correct, uh, the last seven, eight days been 108, 109, uh, up to 110. Yeah, yesterday we were driving, it was like 108. And boy, we just really cranked up that AC. I mean, even getting out the car to walk to the store, it's like like sizzling on your skin. Oh, my goodness. And speaking of sizzling on the skin, uh, you know, a, a lot of people, even like when they go into the beaches, they go on outside, they put the sunscreen, they put all of this these chemical these products on it, you know, try to cool uh, uh and keep from getting sunburned and a lot of stuff that uh they put on and uh, we got a guest today uh that a lot of stuff that uh, people put on to try to prevent sunburn and all this is also affecting our globe is affecting global warming it's killing the planets it's killing the coral reef and that's what we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about something similar to that so michelle i'm excited uh, to be talking about these things because I don't know hardly anything about it. So I'm going to learn a lot uh, today. Oh, what are your thoughts? Well, most definitely. We like to hear, we like to get educated uh, about topics such as these because a lot of people don't know. I mean, I mean, I don't think we really, I don't think a lot of the a majority of people really understand the chemicals that are involved in the products that they do put on their skin and their hair on their face in general, basically use around the house. So, you know, this is going to take it to a, you know, a certain type of category. We're talking about uh, sunscreens and a lot of other products, but we're going to learn from the guests today. So we're really excited. We're going to learn from it. And wherever you watching uh, this ad or listening to it, if you're listening to it on uh, KCBQ radio or uh, live on, E360 television, a transfer TV, YouTube TV, and over 35 of the live uh, streaming uh, networks. Uh, welcome to the show. And if you want to be part of the conversation, all you have to do is just uh, go to the platform that you're on. And you can uh, ask uh, any question that you might have for our great, great guests. And Michelle, I'm ready to get this started. Can you please uh, introduce the title of the show, the purpose of the show, and introduce our great, great guests? Yes, the title of today's show is, Is Our Use of Sunscreen Killing Off the Planet's Coral Reefs? And we're having a conversation with Executive Vice President of Stream to Sea, Mike Multeri. And we're going to talk about, you know, the history and the background of Stream to Sea and the services and the products that they do provide and why the planet's coral reefs are being destroyed by sunscreens and talk about the chemical oxybenzone that is used in most sunscreens. Mike Maltari, he was raised in Hawaii, mostly in the water. Now living in Idaho with his family, Mike enjoys any and all outdoor activities. After spending years recovering from environmental toxicities, Mike came out of retirement to join the Stream to Sea team. Stream to Sea is the only brand in the world that has products scientifically tested and proven safe for freshwater fish, saltwater fish, and coral lava. Mike is passionate about protecting the babies and oceans from unsafe personal care ingredients. So we're definitely going to learn a little bit about this um, topic today. So please welcome to the show audience, Mark, Mark, Mike Multeri. And I hope I didn't mispronounce your last name. I was close. I think it's really humorous okay. that I'm trying to protect the planet. And if you look at the, the last name, Maltair actually means bad earth. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah, bad farmers in my history, I think. I'm not sure, but but that's uh, that's French. <laughs> How you doing, Mike? How you doing? Welcome to the show, man. So excited to have you on here, man. So, hey, Mike, first of all, can you tell our, our viewers and our listeners a little bit about you? Uh where you grew up, I think she had mentioned that a little bit in Hawaii, and I wonder how that was. And uh, I just, uh, just, just tell them uh, why you're so passionate about uh, this topic. Sure. Well, I was um, raised in Hawaii. I was there from about fifth grade through junior year in in high school. Actually, went to the same high school as uh, Barack Obama, so went to Punahou. Um, it was an amazing place to grow up right? I was in Hanama Bay, 
one of the only marine preserves in Hawaii. I was in Hanama Bay weekly, you know, many, many times a month. And it was incredible to walk into the water up to your knees and be run into by fish because there were just so many, right? They were everywhere. You couldn't do anything about it. You were going to get hit. And if anybody was abusing the reef, we would take frozen peas and put it down their swimming trunks because then those fish would join them in their swimming trunks and then they would get out of the water. So they wouldn't stand on the reef anymore and they wouldn't, uh, you know, harass the fish. We know better now. We don't feed the fish in Hanama Bay. But I took my daughters back about 15 years ago to Hanama Bay. Beautiful bay, beautiful hike. And my daughter had been in the water for 15 minutes, came back out and said, love the bay, but why did we bring our mask and snorkel? She hadn't seen fish yet, and she had been in the water for 15 minutes compared to being run into by the fish previously. So to me, I was brought to tears and knew we had to do something because I couldn't even share my own childhood with my children because it didn't exist any longer. And part of that has to do with sunscreen. There's a lot of other factors that are out there, but particularly in a bay, the chemicals coming off of the human body do some serious impact, both for us and for the coral. And there, I don't believe coral's been alive for quite a while. There's actually a very specific number, and it is one drop of oxybenzone in six and a half Olympic sized swimming pools gets you to a concentration of 62 parts per trillion, and that is enough to kill coral larvae. So picture that one drop in six Olympic sized swimming pools. Right? So 6,000 tourists a day at one point were getting into Hanama Bay. You can imagine it was sitting at 29,800 parts per trillion rather than the 62 that it took to kill coral larvae. So a lot of things couldn't, you know, even parrotfish and moray eels and things like that start off female, convert to male during breeding time. And if there's too much estrogen in the water, too many of these chemicals, they cannot convert. So they couldn't breed in that area. So very scary things. Wow. So, uh, Mike, do you believe that this is a problem uh, worldwide, uh, not just in certain places in the United States? I actually saw an article uh, done by Joe DiNardo, an environmental toxicologist, that said that there's no body of water currently that doesn't have these chemicals in them. There's probably not a living being that doesn't have these chemicals in their system. Uh, his estimation, well, as of 2008, the studies showed that 96.8% of Americans had these chemicals in their system at all times. And now the estimation by Joe DiNardo and uh, Dr. Craig Downs is over 99% has these chemicals in their system at all times. And they're endocrine disruptors, right? So they're they're attacking the thyroid, the hypothalamus, all sorts of things that are really important for us to exist. And they're also blocking testosterone and adding estrogen to the human body. Within 30 minutes of application of the majority of body care products, like more than 85%, uh, you can detect these chemicals in your urine. So you put it on your skin and it goes right into your bloodstream, right? I mean, within 30 minutes, it's gone through your bloodstream and into your bladder. What are some of the other uh, effects that... Uh... Um, you say you can detect this in the urine, you can test, detect this in the body. What are some of the other uh, effects uh, that uh, by having all of that stuff in uh, the the beaches and core sea that is causing hum the human population? Yeah. Well, if you look at it, almost every life form that comes into contact with it, it bioaccumulates for some period of time. And everybody, it would be different. Um, and every species and organism would be different, but they are finding um, in the mussels of the fish that we eat or that anything else in the ocean eats. We're finding it in seabird eggs. We're finding these chemicals all over the place. So it is affecting the fertility. And if you look at the work of Dr. Shanna Swan, she says that there's two things that are coming that are incredibly significant if we stay on the current trajectory. And that is by the year 2050, she said there will be more pieces of plastic in the ocean than there will be fish. Part of that's because the plastic is accumulating very quickly. And part of it is because the fertility of fish is going down really rapidly. 
So she says in the year 2050, 2.4 billion people around the planet will starve because the waterways will not be able to support their need for protein. The same year, she says, based on the fact that we've lost close to 60% of our fertility in the last 22 years, that the human race, you'll have to have a medical intervention to be able to reproduce. So she's predicting that the human race will be functionally extinct 27 years from now because we've lost 60% of our fertility and it's supposed to go down 1% to 3% a year based on these same petrochemicals. So it's many of the chemicals that are in plastic, that are in body care products, that are in um, herbicides and pesticides. The original benzophenones, the original benzones, were actually a Monsanto patented herbicide from 1954 that blocked the sun from the plant. So they decided, why don't we put this in plastic? It might block the sun in the plastic. Why don't we put this into body care products? It might make them more shelf stable. Why don't we put them on the human body and see if that will block the sun? And it did. It had some huge side effects. And according to the FDA, the only things to use that are generally regarded as safe and effective for sunscreens are actually minerals. So titanium dioxide or zinc oxide. Wow. Uh, you were badly affected by the environmental toxicity. Can you share this with the audience? Or what sure. happened? Yeah. So being raised in Hawaii, I am part Hawaiian. You can't tell by my skin color. I didn't get the cool skin color. Instead, I got sturdy bones and wide feet. I was having problems. It doesn't help me in the sun at all. I'm maybe a little bit better swimmer. I'm better at football, maybe. But when it comes to the ocean and the sun, it really didn't help me. So I went to a doctor in uh, Nanaimo, BC, one of the founders, one of the fathers of functional medicine, um, Dr. John Klein, that spent about six weeks trying to figure out why somebody like myself, who has a B positive blood type, which usually is pretty easy going, you usually don't have huge medical problems until you get out of balance. And I got out of balance. So he was trying to figure out what was a trigger that caused that. And there were a number of different things, but after about six weeks of research going through, you know, my whole family, he said, not only were you one of the first generations in your family, many generations raised in Hawaii, that knew how to swim, right? So my aunt swam a little bit. I think my dad learned when he was in his late 30s. And you're going, you people live on an island and you don't know how to swim. <laughs> well, I was a water baby. So I went in the water constantly. And because I had too light of a skin tone, I was putting on sunscreen multiple times a day. Not only did we have a pool and the ocean, we were putting on sunscreen constantly and then showering constantly. And what he said is, I am betting that the endocrine disruptor and the environmental toxin that caused you to get out of balance was actually your sunscreen and your body care products. Hold now, this though. Hold that though. We got to take a station break. Break, but we're gonna come back and we're gonna pick it up. Remember, out of balance. Uh, so we're gonna pick it back up with that one because this is so interesting. And I tell you, whichever platform you're watching this on, if you want to be part of this conversation, all you have to do just go to the comments and ask Mike any questions that you might have. Remember, it's your life, and we'll see you shortly after the break.
your masterpiece. Love who you are. Love who you were born to be. Love, love me some me. That's what I'm talking about. When you leave high school, you gotta know today or tomorrow, hopefully today, what your plans are. Hopefully, yeah, there is no bad decision unless there is no plan. Create, collaborate, commit with confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. And everything that you do. Hello, and welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life, and I, I got my great guest here, Mike, and he's explaining uh, a lot of things that I think we all, that uh, your openness and our openness, uh, uh, a lot of these things, because we don't know that by putting certain things, not knowing what's in it, how it affect uh, our our lives in general. I mean, the C, the core C, and uh, us personally, and I think we need to know a little bit more about all of these things so to get a better understanding. So wherever you're watching this at, if you want to be part of the conversation, just answer the question that you might have. And uh, I might will be able to answer that. And Mike, I want to pick it back up because uh, you was uh, explaining uh, the toxicities and how you was affected by that and you know, some of the changes. I want to pick it back up with that. Yeah, certainly. Well, it was really a long journey to try to figure out uh, why my thyroid had failed. I'm one of these people that if I can avoid big pharma, I will. But I'm also not one of those people that's a naysayer. I'm. It's a wonderful time to be alive. If you need a medicine to survive, we've got it, you know, and that's that's something that I would take advantage of. But if I don't have to take it, I'm I'm very motivated not to. So that was the impetus behind you know, six weeks worth of medical research with a doctor out of Canada, uh, one of the few that was willing to go through all of that to try to figure out exactly what had thrown my system off. We are now, oh goodness, probably 15 years into a chelating protocol to try to get different chemicals and things like that out of my system. And it does wreak havoc constantly. It's throwing off my blood sugars and my cholesterol and all sorts of different things that to date I've been able to treat without the medicine. The thyroid is something that it was already shot, so we had to had to take the medicine. But so far, the rest of it I've been able to do without it. And part of it is because I've cleaned up the diet, I've changed exercise, and I've made sure that the products that I have don't contain chemicals that are endocrine disruptors and estrogen. And it's a really long list. You know, at this point, um, in the UK, they actually just recently published a list of 20 chemicals that they say cause breast cancer. And most of them are in body care products, right? And and that's a pretty normal chemical in the body care products. I actually have a friend here in Idaho that I don't know why we're friends. I'm wearing a, a polo shirt, which is very formal for me because I'm a real outdoor person and you know, usually in the water and you know that sort of thing. But he looks like a GQ model and is really buff looking. And he explained to me the first time we met that he actually, based on the work that I was doing, because this isn't something that you share with everyone, 
but since he was 22 years old, he's been having surgery to remove breast tissue from his chest every four years. They took all of the estrogen out of his food. They took it, you know, he, he was on estrogen blockers and testosterone boosters, and it didn't matter. Every four years, he was still having the surgery. Well, about six years ago, he found Stream to See, replaced all of his body care products, and he no longer is having to have surgery. So the estrogen was coming from all of the stuff that he was putting on himself. Once again, that just scares me. I was just in, in Mexico with a bunch of family friends. Their kids were seniors in high school, uh, rugby players. And all of them were asking me how I was getting the muscle tone I was. I'm 55. They're 18, right? These were athletes. Right. They're not being born and shaped the same way that they used to based on Dr. Shanna Swan's work with the estrogen and these petrochemicals being present during the gestational period of these kids. There's about a four hour window where it's shaping the amount of androgen and, and uh, testosterone that's going to be dumped into that kid's system to create that male child. The shoulders are not as broad. The waist is not as narrow we're turning more blocky. And Shanna Swan says that's due in large part to these petrochemicals. Now, not all of them are in body care products, but a lot of them are in cleaning products. And a lot of them are very similar chemistry base, right? They're not that far off from each other as far as their chemical makeup is concerned. You said we're turning uh, uh, more blocky. What, what do you mean by that? Well, Blocky, I mean, our shoulders and our waists are not as different as they used to be, right? So mm -hmm. I'm I'm old school. I'm 55, but my chest is a 51 inch and my waist is a 34. Now you're starting to see more and more of our population. Now there's still athletes and there's still people that are taking, you know, all sorts of different stuff. They're very lucky, but um, many of them, their chest to waist ratio is nowhere near that difference. Right. We're just becoming more and more straight up, more rectangles instead of triangles. <laughs> that, that, that's what I thought you would say. <laughs> it's like, okay, I, I never heard it uh, utilized like that before. You know, yeah. I'll tell you what, I want to show a, show a little a short uh, clip and uh, uh, stream to see and uh, just talk about it after that. 71% of the earth is water, but only 1% of that is water we can use, and it must be protected. Every form of water, whether ice, snow, rain, fresh or salt water, is impacted by pollution from harmful chemicals and preservatives found in personal care products. Take for instance the ocean's coral reef systems. Ingredients found in chemical-based sunscreens can cause corals to whiten and die. It's estimated that as much as 14,000 tons of sunscreen enters our coral reefs annually from recreational activities and runoff. An ocean reef affects marine life, fishing industries, water sports, tourism, and the air we breathe. These same harmful ingredients impact lakes, streams, and rivers, and are toxic to our own health. Yet we're wearing them every day while we work and play in these environments. Stream to Sea is committed to creating products that are safe for people and the planet. Formulated by a dive instructor and cosmetic chemist, Autumn Blum was passionate about creating a line of performance-based products that would protect the environment she loves. So no matter what your outdoor passion may be, or even for normal daily wear, Stream to Sea's full line of award-winning, third-party tested sun and body care products are good for you and proven not to harm the environments they're used in. Made in the USA and packaged in sugarcane resin tubes and recycled milk jugs, we're doing our part so you can do yours. From stream to sea, have fun and protect what you love. Wow, you know that's uh, uh, that's a great little video right there. You know, so so let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. What are some of the uh, type of products that stream to sea makes and uh, to my, uh, that's uh, that's uh, in response to a lot of the stuff like the sunscreen and that, that most people and other products sell that are so good for not only protecting the coral reefs and other things, but also protecting uh, the human population. Sure. 
So one of the things that's real important to get is that term reef safe, right? You see it on a lot of things, it'll say reef safe. And what most of the population doesn't understand is that's a marketing term. That's not a science term. There's no law, there's no regulation, there's no agreement upon what that term even means. So there's a ton of people out there that are putting reef safe on something and they, they have no idea what it does, or they know that it's super toxic and they're just not going to talk about it. So everything that stream to see makes is based on when Autumn sold her last company, she went diving in Palau and she watched a boat show up and dump a couple dozen people into the water and watched the rainbow slick that came off of them. And as a chemist went, uh Oh, Right? It's very pretty, but that looks like an oil slick, so I need to know what's in those products. She watched this dive boat. The people came out of the water. They showered with a shampoo that sudsed up and went right over the side into the ocean. And what she did was create her first product was a shampoo that was in direct correlation to that. Just watched it go into the water and went, uh-oh, we got to do something better. The first product was actually... Um, eco-certified, it was organic, and one of the huge national health food chains certified it as their own as well. She didn't sleep well, so she sent it off to uh, Eckerd College in Florida and said, if you have any stuff that you've grown, any organisms that you've grown, you've got these aquariums sitting out there, put a couple of drops into this and see what it does. That first shampoo, remember, eco-certified, organic, health food store certified, Two drops in a 20-gallon aquarium killed everything within a couple of hours. So most of our products are directly in response to that. We can't find one that's clean enough or meet our requirements for not only being super effective, but not doing any harm. So at this point, our product line is the only one on the planet that has been tested and proven safe for humans, freshwater fish, saltwater fish, and coral larvae. I actually add C. elegans in there because C. elegans are, they share 70% of human DNA and essentially they're sea worms. So a lot of people that are testing different drugs and diseases and things like that test on C. elegans because they're kind of like the canary in the coal mine. They're the ones that are gonna go first and they, they are very similar to human DNA. So we do no harm to them either. That to me is what I would call the definition of reef safe, but that's just me and we're the only ones, right? So why it's important to me, that video was kind of pointing out, but didn't get to the extent that I would go, which is the ocean is where about 70% of the oxygen for the planet comes from. All of the plants, the phytoplankton, all that sort of stuff. And it's between 30 and 50% of the carbon sequestration, depending on who you talk to. So you talk about global warming. We keep hearing about the, the trees, you know, the rainforests, which obviously are very important as well, but they're nowhere near the extent of the ocean. Why do we care about the coral? Because the coral reef is the nursery for the rest of the ocean. If the coral reef dies, eventually, so does the rest of the ocean. And then eventually, so does humanity because we don't have oxygen and we don't have carbon sequestration. So infinitely important, right? And so that to me is the double edge that I walk. And this is what brought me out of retirement. I had sold some schools that, that we had created, the only accredited Montessori schools in the state of Idaho. And when I sold that, what could pull me out of retirement, except for something that dealt with why my thyroid died and why the reef that I grew up on died, and what that does for humanity. And I'd really like my daughters to have the option to be able to have children so I can be a grandpa someday if if we, you know, if they choose. I think I would be an awesome grandpa. I, I people have been accusing me of that since I was 12. So might as well, might as well get there. But they may or may not have that option based on this timeline if we don't get these petrochemicals shut off. Wow. Yes, I think the world need to. Uh, become aware of it. We have to take another station break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about coral reef and the benefits of it to our economy and why people should care. Why do they need to change their focus? So when we get back from the break, we're going to pick it up there. And if you want to be part of the conversation, just go to whichever platform you're watching or listening to this on and ask this great man any question that you might have. Remember, 
It's your life, and we'll see you shortly after the break. Dingley here, producer of The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And the new audio version of James' book, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, is a must-have. James shares his true life story of struggle and success in America. It's both a cautionary tale and a roadmap to achieving the American dream. Get the new audio version of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, by James Cooley on Amazon.com or wherever audiobooks are sold. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. And uh, Mike is, uh, I tell you, he's educating us. Uh, he's putting it out there. And uh, we need to take heed. We need to listen, you know, because uh, we want to be around. We want our, the earth to be around. We want our, just like what he said, uh, yeah, a lot of things that are affecting uh, us, the population is not being able to uh, have kids or problems with that because of the chemicals that are that are out there that are getting in our system because many of us are not aware of what we are doing uh, with polluting the oceans uh, with sunscreen and all this other type of stuff that might not be fit uh, for human consumption in any way whatsoever not just drinking or eating it from the skin and just the body so uh we got to be a little bit more aware of that, and we're going to get off into a little bit more of that right now. You know, Mike, you know, said the core reefs are beneficial to our economy, uh, and especially in the tourism uh, industry. Can you explain to our audience why the public need to be more cautious and more aware of what's going on and how they can uh, help resolve some of these issues? Sure. Well, and what it comes down to is there's a lot of people that are not on a reef. They're not near the ocean and they don't think that it's important. Right. So the reason that it is, is any of these areas, especially like you talked about with tourism, the reef protects the islands from erosion, from hurricanes, from all sorts of different things. The fish that live in the reef are the reason that people go there. Right. They go to, to see the fish. They go to see the corals of all the different colors and all that sort of thing. And a lot of these places, that's all they have going for it. Right. The, the, there's nothing else really that, that works. The natives might not be friendly. There might not be good food. But if you have fish and you have a reef, people are going to flock there. So how does somebody in 
say, the middle of Missouri, how does that affect them, right? And so for years, I was very hesitant to talk about the hormones, right? And people's reproductive system. And the fact that if you use these wrong things, you have too much estrogen, your testosterone's blocked, you're going to need to take medication to, to deal with that, right? I mean, we hear all the commercials for Viagra and Cialis and all this sort of stuff. And I was very, very hesitant to have that discussion. And at one point, we had an intern that worked for NOAA, right? The ocean side of things, and for NASA, the space side of things. And she was the one who was the go-between whenever they were doing science experiments about the ocean and space. And she said, Mike, you need to talk to people about how important the reef is and the fact that it doesn't matter if you're on sewer, septic, whatever, if you're taking a shower, it eventually gets to the ocean, right? It doesn't matter whether it goes through the water table or whether it goes through a stream to a river out into the ocean, it all gets there. And if they don't care about that, you talk to them about their reproductive system. And the reason that you do that is because the National Hockey League had the cup as a mandatory part of the uniform 100 years before the helmet. Let that sink in, right? What's more important to people? So if we talk about things that are potentially embarrassing, and I'm, I'm very skirting around it being very good to be censored and everything, right? But if we talk to them about those things, and it saves the planet, and therefore all of humanity, you might not make the pharmaceutical companies happy because they really want to sell those little blue pills. But if you talk about things like this, like one of the People I met at a trade show said, son, I don't need to talk about this because the Lord will take care of it. And I said, I have no doubt that the Lord will take care of it. My issue is I would be much happier to see it because I know when all humanity dies off, the planet will fix itself fairly quickly, right? And there may be some irreparable harm, but but for the most part, if we can get this parasite that people, you know, of humanity off of this <laughs> living planet, then it will be fine. I'd much rather be a good steward of the planet and fix the problem so that we can continue. And that's really what it comes down to. I'm not worried about climate change or the planet dying because of the planet or climate change in and of itself. I'm worried about it because humans can't survive it, right? That's all I'm looking at. I don't care whether it's a, a God-driven thing or a human-driven thing. If we can change it by 1% and therefore we survive, that sounds like a good plan to me. Sounds like a great plan. There's one thing that you stated in, in research that we did is the chemicals that seem to be doing more damage to our planet and marine ecosystem is oxybenzone. Can you explain to our, our viewers what that is? So oxybenzone, it has another... Um, I guess, sister chemical that has recently come out. So the history of it is back in 1954, they used a Monsanto patented herbicide to block the sun from the plant. Then the plastic, we went through all that, the, then used on the human skin. Hawaii banned oxybenzone and octanoxate. Both are chemicals that have been shown to cause harm to both humans in the endocrine system and estrogen and to the reef, same way. Um, they... Hawaii banned those two chemicals. And then immediately the chemicals came up with, the chemical companies came up with avobenzone and octocrylene. Now, avobenzone and oxybenzone. I'm not a chemist, but I don't think you have to be to go avobenzone, oxybenzone, benzone, benzone, right? Not that different. And then when you add in octocrylene, octocrylene was announced 17 months ago uh, in the Bloomberg report, they said uh, it's a carcinogen. After a, a couple of months sitting in a tube on a shelf, it turns into benzophenone, which is a carcinogen that was banned in the U.S. for decades. So the FDA acknowledged, yes, this is true, and we're going to give the manufacturers a year to figure out how to fix this problem. It's been 17 months, and not a single one has been pulled from the market. Now, what most people don't know is that the FDA has very little control over the body care market at all. It has more over the sunscreen market than it does over shampoo and soap and makeup and all that sort of thing. The most that the FDA by law can do is request a voluntary recall. 
Now, the last time they did something, they found a benzene, a cross-contaminant, some sort of a cleaning product, probably. They tested close to 300 brands of sunscreen and after sun gels, and they found benzene in 78 of them. They requested a voluntary recall of those 78. Seven of them pulled off the market. The other 71 stayed on the market with the same formula, never changed anything. So really what it comes down to is the American public and that of the rest of the planet is the guinea pig for these body care companies, most of which are owned by pharmaceutical companies. So to me, it's it's incredibly frustrating that we don't have transparency, right? We don't really know. If you have a chemical in a sunscreen, because it's an over-the-counter drug, by law, the chemical has to be on the label. In a body care product, if it says fragrance, you can hide 3,000 chemicals under the term fragrance. Now, we've always heard, if it's a synthetic fragrance, watch out for it. But nobody's ever told us why. It just means that we have no idea what's in that product and how much estrogen and endocrine disruptors and potentially carcinogens, because we don't have any way to evaluate it. If you don't know who manufactures it or where the, the product is made, if it's in one of the huge manufacturing facilities that a whole bunch of different products are made in, it's very likely that you're getting cross-contaminants. And that, to me, just scares me because you don't know as a consumer. And that's why it was so important for us to not only test every one of our batches, to buy a factory, you know, we're a woman-owned, veteran-operated factory in Wachula, Florida, so we can control what comes in and out of that factory so we know there's no cross-contaminants. And then we send it off for third-party testing and we pass the Protect Land and Sea certification along with then sending the formula off to make sure that it doesn't do any harm in the aquatic environment. There's nobody else that has been able to say that. I'm betting there's people that have tested, but most of them don't want us to know the results is my guess. <laughs> you talk about the, uh, the company's a strain to see. Uh, can you get a... Give us a little history. Uh, we got about a minute and a half before the break, and we'll pick it up when we get back. Sure. Um, it, it was yes. really about Autumn being a diver and watching the reefs that she went to start to die off. And it was usually the places where it was busy, and it was usually the places where there were a lot of people and potentially high chemical load. And those reefs are dying, and they're dying fairly rapidly. And there's lots of good work that's going on out there. We actually support reef renewal and did a crazy for coral campaign. But it all came down to her love in life is being underwater. If she's not hydrated, she gets difficult to be around. So we send her diving as often as we can. Uh, and the life there absolutely loves her. Tiger sharks take chunks out of my Hobie cat as I go by and they hug her. I don't understand. I like tiger sharks, but I would like to see them from a distance. So for her, it's all about how do we keep that alive so she can continue to enjoy it. And for me, it's about, I'd like some grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, hold on, let's talk. we got to take a station break, but this is so interesting. And uh, I want to pick it up and uh, learn a little bit more about uh, string it to stream to see products more about the, the products and and uh i want to tell the world how they can go about uh, uh getting some of the products so when we get back we're going to talk about all of those type of things so if you want to be part of the conversation you know i tell you right after the break you can join in with us you know so uh, i'll see you shortly after the break <music>
The heart of Stream to Sea began with a chemist, an environmentalist, and an explorer. Together they saw the need for healthy, biodegradable, and eco-friendly personal care products formulated specifically to be safe for you and our waters. This need is especially true when you consider the wide range of preservatives, additives, and chemicals that are used in most personal care products today. Some of these ingredients are toxic to humans, marine life, and coral reefs. When these chemicals are introduced to our waters, the corals, which are living organisms that help make up the reef, become ill, whiten, and may even die. This, in turn, affects thousands of species of fish who rely on the coral reefs. When these populations decline, it impacts all of us. It's estimated that more than 6,000 tons of sunscreen enters our coral reefs annually from tourist activities alone. This number doesn't take into account the products entering our rivers, lakes, and streams through stormwater and wastewater. While some brands in the market today claim to be reef safe and ocean friendly, many contain ingredients that are known to harm the fragile ecosystems and marine life of our waters. These chemicals can also have a negative effect on phytoplankton, which produce approximately 70% of the oxygen on Earth from the oceans. Outside of saltwater contamination from personal care products, the fresh waters that we depend on are also in danger. They contain life-giving elements and plant nutrients, but when we introduce foreign ingredients like those found in sunscreens, shampoo, conditioners, and more, the balance is quickly disrupted. Stream to Sea is committed to creating products that are safe for people and the planet. Some ingredients, even many that are safe for people, can be very toxic in an aquatic ecosystem. We allotted a significant portion of our startup costs to in-depth testing at independent laboratories. Proven readily biodegradable in both fresh and salt water, our products are tested and safe on a wide range of species, including sea elegans, freshwater fish, saltwater fish, and even coral larvae. We've done all of Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. But watching that uh, that little documentary, I wish we had time to show it all. It's interesting. I watched it prior to the show. You know, so uh, it's a lot of interesting things that are there. And, and you will be able to go to uh, um, any of my social media accounts and finish watching that if you like. And I hope you do. You know, so, uh, Mike, I want to pick it up with that. I want to pick it up with a, a lot of different things that you all are doing and the product that you all are making. And also want to tell our, our viewers and listeners what they need to be focused on. Yeah. To uh, just like we touched bases on that a few minutes ago to help uh, try to resolve some of the issues that we have. So uh, can you pick it up from there? Sure. What I suggest is going to stream to see.com and remember there's a two in the middle. So stream to see you're following the, the water cycle, right? From the mountains and the streams all the way down to the ocean. So on stream to see.com, not only do we have a whole bunch of science, not only do we have blogs, not only do we have all those sort of things, we also have our ingredients to avoid list. Now, remember, in a sunscreen, you're going to be able to find those ingredients to avoid. In the body care products, almost all of those ingredients to avoid could be hidden under the term fragrance. So to me, that one is, I don't know of a better option. I don't know of anybody else that's out there saying, yeah, we've actually tested it and this is safe. So my suggestion, if stream to see makes it, that's what I use because I can't come up with anything else that I trust to that extent. I just told the dentist's office that did a root canal on me without anesthesia because one of my problems with uh, my my blood makeup is that I, I don't react well to anesthesia. So I said the thing that's scariest to me is actually washing my hands in your bathroom. And they were shocked. I'm like, I can deal with pain. It was 15 minutes of excruciating pain, but I can't fight poison. I can't fight the the estrogen. I can't fight the endocrine disruptors if I'm putting it on my system. So I suggest going to stream to see.com and just learning. And you will find a whole bunch of different things like the work of Dr. Craig Downs from Hereticus Labs and Shanna Swan's work, uh, all amazing things, which by the way, Shanna Swan's work, you hear about it all the time on the news. It's just not presented the same way. 
they're talking about our fertility is dropping so fast that populations are aging out, which is going to be detrimental to our economy, right? So we put it into an economy scale and most people spaced out. If she had said humanity is going to end, people would probably be much more interested in that, right? So that's what we're talking about. It's the same thing. If people are dying faster than they're being born, we're going to have a real problem. So what have we done? We've tried to take every problem that we can find that is within our purview to fix, and we do it. So we made a shampoo. We made a conditioner. The conditioner is amazing. It takes all the salt off of your body. The shampoo not only is an amazing shampoo and you can use it as hand soap, but it's great at um, cleaning wetsuits or anything that starts to smell bad. I mean, it's an amazing product. We make lip balms because most lip balms actually dry your lips out. The part where you go, ooh, that's cooling. That's actually drying your lips out. So we made one that doesn't do that because otherwise we don't sleep well at night. We're not very good business people. We would be better off if we were getting people addicted to our products, but we don't do that. We don't want customers. We want advocates. We want people that are educated and understand what it's about because then they can make a change. So one of them that we did recently about, I was five years into working for this company and my business partner, Autumn Blum, our cosmetic chemist came to me and said, um, hey, we finally are at the point where you and I can take small salaries. So I'd work here for five years without pay. And she, I said, great, right? And then a couple days later, she said, do you know what mask defog is made out of? I had no idea. And I went, oh, crud. I think I'm going to lose my salary. And yeah, it's because the mass defog is typically made with a base of baby shampoo. The way the original baby shampoos were tested, you're not going to like this, was in the 40s on black male prisoners. They tied them down and dripped uh, baby shampoo into their eyes for 24 hours at a time to see what sort of reaction they had. It's horrendous. So... Two drops of most mass defogs will kill everything in a 20-gallon aquarium. So we made a mass defog, and I'm happy to say I'm at year seven, and I'm now our lowest paid employee, and I'm very happy about that. But for us, everything is about science over marketing. I'm going to tell you that it is good for you, and it's highly effective. I had somebody say the other day, I wish it smelled like this, and I'm like, that's great but you're willing to change your hormones and potentially alter your unborn children because you want it to smell differently? That doesn't make any sense to me, right? So we've got BB cream. I'm happy to say the Black Women's Divers Association has been harassing us for seven years to find a sunscreen that's actually good on their skin, and we did it. We came up with one called our Everyday Mineral Sunscreen. It blends with almost every skin tone. We're finally inclusive. Not only are we safe, but we're going to make it for everyone. We made one that shimmers. And when you have beautiful melanin-rich skin, the shimmer just stands out like gold coming off of you. And it's a sunscreen, and it happens to protect you really well as well. So there's all sorts of different products, and it's usually a reaction just like that. I can't find one that's safe, and this one's killing things. So we end up making it. So there's wow. a lot of different ones on the docket, but we're not there yet. When, we're down to the last minute of the show. Please tell our viewers and listeners how the, they can get these products again and, and get in, and get in touch with you or the company if they want to. stream to seecom We've got a store locator. If you want to buy one in a store, you can buy it online. It is easy to get in touch with us. I'm the only Mike that's there. I'm one of the few males that's in our, our management team. So hello at stream to see.com or Mike at stream to see.com and you'll get to us. Everybody in our company is very easy to reach. We're a very small company trying to save the world. We are totally accessible. And if you ever want this sort of a talk for your group, your conservation group, we're happy to give it right? We want people to understand. Like I said, we, we need advocates. We don't really need customers because if you don't understand the why and, and using your term, it's your life and it's incredibly important. And we want you to be healthy so that you can impact others' lives. And to me, that's what it's about. Mike, I want to thank you so much, you and uh, Stream this team. 
to to see so much uh, for coming on the show. You know, this was absolutely sensational. So thank you, my friend. I'd like to thank Dr. Michelle Cooley for putting together another absolutely wonderful show. Most importantly, I'd like to thank our listeners and viewers for tuning in to the James Cooley Show. It's your life or daily. Always dream big, think big, and be big at everything that you do. We'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same place. It's your life.